Welcome back to the Love in Dubai show. While many of us are preparing for back to school and back to work, our guest right here has been preparing for the back to race season. Please welcome Nick from Teenage Wolf. Thank you. Uh, so good to have you here because literally the last time we did this was bang in the middle of COVID. Uh, so it's great to bring you into the studio. Yeah, nice to see that things are starting to relax a little bit. in yeah. certain ways but um yeah great to be back thank you um we've documented the team angel Wolf story plenty over the last couple of years it's an incredible community story of inspiring individuals uh, but for those of you who don't know can you give us a little bit of an introduction about what you guys do yeah look um 2014 we started to race for my son with disabilities uh, rio was born um 2003 and after six months he had his first seizure so it took us down a whole road of kind of getting to know the world of people with determination. And he's got a very rare chromosome disorder. So it's called 1Q44 deletion, which leads to seizures, nonverbal. Most skills for him are quite a challenge. Um, And then in 2014, we were trying to look at something that we could do as an activity. So we started racing together. So we did our first triathlon. That was a sport that I did as a kid. And never having an idea if you would enjoy it. Um, So I swim, pulling him in a kayak. We've got a special bike, sits on the front, and we run together. And... um, Yeah, we've kind of done lots of races. We've done 400 plus races. Um, and we've kind of calculated the distance that we've done over the last, since 2014. So we've covered about 10,000 kilometers of swimming, cycling, and running. Kind of distance from Dubai to Australia. And Rio just loves it. And I think it's, you know, it's become more than just a father and son. It's a family unit. My little daughter, Tio, is now 14. She also races exactly as I do. So she swims and bikes and runs with Rio and again our focus has always been about inclusion making sure that it, Rio is included into the community. Well this was exactly my next question because a coin that you guys actually phrased is inclusive impactivity because you started as a duo and then it became a family and now it's a community that you're inspiring so what actually does inclusive impactivity mean? Well look I think inclusion especially in this day and age is that we want to make sure that everyone's equal and everyone's welcome and that's something that we've done with Team Age Wolf and also we want to make an impact in the community and maybe inspire others to go you know how can they include others at school at home and in different environments so yeah it's kind of a nice tag word mm. um, and it me- I think it means a lot to us because how important inclusion is especially in this day and age Um, I think we've all noticed that during COVID, you know, we've all been at home, how important family are. So we start with the fundamentals. And I suppose that's what Team Angel was, a little family unit. And as we've grown, obviously, like you said, was friends, families, relatives, community, yeah. and how important it is to look after each other. But we're all, we're all the same, we're all the same. But you guys have actually been talking about uh, inclusion long before COVID. Yes. Um, you were kind of always uh, your climb... Uh, with Rio World Tour that yep. happened pre-COVID and it was kind of inspiring people at the end of every month to climb a peak. So then COVID hit. Yeah. And we're also going to talk a little bit about racing season in Dubai, which is kicking off. We're super excited <laughs> about it. But what happened during COVID for you? Like, how was that? Because obviously you're all about people. You're all about getting out of racing. So what was the pandemic like for you as a family? Look, super stressful. You know, you can imagine a little boy who's nonverbal, um, had to stay at home for a good period of time. He didn't understand why he wasn't allowed outside. Um, we kind of thought of an activity that we could include Rio. Um, really simple. <laughs> I decided to climb up and down my stairs, the equivalent of Burj Khalifa. You probably uh, saw the headline guys. Yeah, it <laughs> took us like four and a half hours. But for four and a half hours, I had my son on my back, And he just smiled and laughed and giggled. And I think for him, it's being active as a family and doing things together. And you just kind of come to realize how important that is to him. Um, And he just loved it. He loved it. Can you imagine sat on someone's back for four and a half hours? You know, if I put my daughter on there for 10 minutes, she'd be like, Dad, I'm bored. Well, I'm thinking Um, about him and I'm also thinking about you who's doing (laughs) doing the climbing here. But it was just, you know, it was fantastic. And what we did at the same time, because it was May of covid year if that makes sense so it was a few months in everyone was at home around the world and then we just kind of did some social media and said look who wants to join and it was just fantastic we had we had families joining from all around the world climbing with us but not just today climbing Burj Khalifa they were climbing their own monuments so mm-hmm. the Eiffel Tower Big Ben and it was fantastic and then from there we've created Climb with Rio World Tour so for six months we go around the world and um, yeah it's it's slowly picking up getting schools and kids involved. Interesting. Um, it's great to hear that it's slowly picking up because obviously schools are finally back in action. Yes. And I'm sure they'll be looking for activities to take part in. 
But we also start, shared a story recently about sponsorship for you guys. Yes. Um, how is that going and how important is it for you to actually get sponsorship for this season? Look, thank you very much. It's really hard. I have to be honest with you. Based here in Dubai, we are a non-profit organization that comes under the Community Development Authority, um, which has been fantastic for us. But the challenge here, we're not allowed to fundraise nor are we allowed to receive donations. So the only way we can exist as an organization is through corporate sponsorship. So companies sponsor us, we put their brands on us, they become a partner, we do loads of activations, we do corporate talks and stuff, etc., with the company. And it's the only way that we can put food on the table. Um, the other way is we do corporate talks. Um, so sponsorship is so important to us. Without sponsorship, um, we can't exist. So Because we can't go out publicly and say, please donate here. Mm. And that, that funding from the public will run our organization. So, um, And we can all imagine during COVID, the first budgets that get hit, CSR, marketing. So for the last... 18 months, those budgets aren't there. So the corporations that we've been talking, they just say, Nick, sorry, most important thing is keeping the organization alive, keeping the team alive. And we get that, we understand, but as non-profits and all those non-profits out there, they still need to exist. Um, so hence, it has been the just hardest about 18 you and your months. To just take like those possible hits throughout that time. Yeah, yeah, and it's been, you know, honestly, the last 18 months has been put food on the table. But we kind of think, you know, we love it. we're lucky we live here in Dubai, you know, I mean, there's certain elements of our sponsorship, so I have a roof over our head, so we're sponsored by Sustainable City, for example, oh, um, so that's fantastic, so we get a villa, so at least we've got that tick, um, but yeah, it's been so, so hard, and we just hope as we come into this new period, um, you know, organizations might go, yeah, we'd like to help the community and an organization like us, hopefully, hopefully we'll get some support. Amazing. So if you've heard that, uh, we'll get some details for you guys to get in touch with Team Angel Wolf at the end of the show. Um, look, the weather's getting cooler. Yeah. The summer is finally inching towards an end. Uh, how excited, how motivated are you guys for racing season? Oh, uh, look, I, I have to big, give a big shout out to all the race organizers. So last week we do uh, kind of like lovely email just thanking everyone for their support and said, look, can you support us? Because the nice thing about all the race organizers, they allow us to race complimentary if that makes sense interesting because these races aren't always cheap no not at all mm. so you can imagine that's, that, that, that's a huge cost for uh-huh. us um and every race organizers comes back with the most wonderful emails they're like nick of course we love what you do we love your support and um, so they've just said look open book come and race all our races so at the moment amazing. i started to schedule because people keep asking nick where are you racing can we come can we join Um, I've had some schools wanting to come. Even if we run the 10K, there's a 5K and a 3K oh, for the kids. That schools so the so, the so you kind of go absolutely great, fantastic. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I've booked provisionally 20 races up to the end of the year. Um, so it's, we're back to racing every weekend. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a busy schedule. And it's, but, you know, I have to admit, it's just fantastic. You know, we have an opportunity here in Dubai that we don't have to travel so far. So I was speaking to some friends in Australia the other day and they were like, you know, how do you manage to do so many races? And I'm like, they're, they're all here. So if mm. I was based in Melbourne, you know, you would have to travel a long way to get to a race to do a triathlon. But we're, we're yeah, we're very lucky, very fortunate. So, you know, I love it. And I'll be honest with you, for me, I love racing, so you know I don't like training. You know, I find it monotonous going for a 10k run, but I love training. But uh, racing. But the nice thing is, the community embraces Rio. So every time we come to a race, people come over, they say hello to Rio. So for me as a father, I I just love that. And one thing that I've learned over the years is, um, people come and say hello to Rio before they say hello to me, and I'm like, that's what inclusion is all about. So going to races, Rio loves it. You know, so there's people, there's integration. And for me, it's almost like therapy. And then we're out racing because he's happy. Um, so it's it's just, it's wonderful. And it's it's something that we do. And my daughter, obviously, she comes and races, Tia races with me. Of course. I, um, want, I wanted to give like a quick shout out to <laughs> Tia, who's an absolute star, because obviously she's growing up in a racing family, but now she's very much like carving her own way. And I'll always see like her Instagram. She's like, came third, came first, like in the women's races. So she's just doing it on her own. Look, and you know, I think for, for her, what we found over the years, you know she's finding her own way it's something that we've never pushed her into it so I, you know we don't say oh you must race this weekend i'm mm. like yeah i'm doing this at the weekend do you want to come she normally will say yeah i'll come and then we're trying to decide what site distance she wants to do and it's just absolutely fantastic and you know when i, I did my first live school talk this week which was just fantastic oh, so great. for the last 18 months 
I've had to do them on Zoom. Um, so this week we went into one of the schools, Amity, um, up in uh, Alcacés, which sure. was just absolutely fantastic. So I did a live talk to the, the children. And, you know, there's a part in my talk where I show a video of Tia racing with Rio. You can see all the kids. They just love it. And then we ask for questions. They're all about Tia, Tia, Tia. And you just kind of go, because she's the same age, yeah. they're relating to Tia. I'm mm. just the old dad that drags his son around a race. <laughs> um, but um, you just kind of go, that's such an inspiration. And I don't think she realizes that. But, um, yeah, she, she's a good girl, very humble um and uh, yeah it's great to see it's great to see her out there and, you know it's also great for me i'm out racing so we did a race uh, the other weekend the aqua an aquathon in Sharjah. Mm. so we literally start together tia i'm I, so i'm pulling rio um tia overtakes me on the swims because she started behind me and i'm like oh, trying to run i'm like okay. <laughs> so then i'm on the run because i'm you know i would say a bit stronger than tia so i'm trying to catch her trying to catch her so I don't catch her, she beats me. Um, <laughs> and um, I just I just love that, you yeah. know what I mean? And then we're at the end and we're all high fives and uh -huh. big hugs. And I just think, yeah, it's just fantastic. You know, it's just fantastic not only to be doing something with Rio, but my daughter's there with me. And then 100%. there's now you start to see as well in this season, um, if she wants to race with Rio, um, you know, it's just that's just magical. And obviously, I always, when she races, I, I follow her just for safety. Mm -hmm. um, the race organizer was super happy with that. But it's just so, in, it's inspiring for me as a dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be swimming and she, re, uh, You're tears keeping pulling, each other going. pulling a kayak and then she's cycling. I'm cycling yeah. next to her with Rio. And yeah, and I just, you know, I think it just makes a, whole, a huge impact. We're going back to the same thing to the community. I think mm. people are starting to see that starting to recognize who we are and how important including this little boy Rio who's now well, not little 18 a young adult um into into the community and I think for us I think it always goes back to the basics it's it's sport sport breaks down barriers look at the Paralympics at the moment 100%. um just how fantastic that is and um you know when we're on a start line we're with everyone else we're starting together we're all included and um, when we cross the finish line you know we've all got a common um, story that we've all just collected together over the last whatever that race distance was and I think for us that's super important and it's you know again it goes back to inclusion and, and um, yeah just just love it and yeah so to answer your question lots of races lots of weekends lots, lots coming up. <laughs> look I like I love that too just health fitness well-being is so super important if you're a parent a teacher a student and you're listening Team Angel Wolf is available to go to your school to give these talks to inspire the kids to get out they can know the schedule that you've got coming up and they can be there with you um so important to start from an early age and you guys are really inspiring that so it's so great look and and just to jump in there you know for me the next generation are going to be looking after this planet. So anything that's positive and impacting their lives from health, fitness, sustainability, and that's literally what our life is all about. I think at an early age you can, I wouldn't say mold, but I think if we can get some lovely positive habits in children from an early age, that can that can set them up for life. Yeah, And I just agreed. love doing school talks. I just, I just so, um, I just fantastic how we engage with the kids and you know literally they the children almost wouldn't let me leave the other day there was just so many questions yeah. and and it was lovely because all the children related to the story for different things guy makes military a couple of boys asking about the royal marines oh, wow. um, i mentioned about art because i studied art in france in toulouse a couple of girls were like oh so tell me about being a designer what was your goal and wow. i was like yeah i wanted to design cars and then there was the fitness aspect and And you just kind of go, there's something connecting with those children for all their different reasons within our story. And you just kind of go, yeah, fantastic. If that can have a positive impact, we're happy. Positive impact. That's all that it's about. <laughs> we need to wrap it up. Yep. But could we get a quick snapshot? What are you doing this weekend if people want to join you? Um, this weekend, I don't know if you've seen, we've got a couple of new activities. So we have a motorbike, a sidecar that the community supported. Um, so Fridays we do Ride with Rio. So what we're trying to do over time is look at How do we connect outside the, the world of triathlons? Because a lot of people don't just don't swim, bike and run. So we go out with the motorbike, we're getting obviously people to join us. And I'm starting to do some car rides. You mentioned about Aston Martin. I'm in chats with them to do a drive with Aston Martin. Oh. So we went out with the Harley Davidson groups recently, uh, went out with Land Rover. So we've been doing lots of great things. So again, it's all about inclusion. So how can I include Rio with different activities? So our ride with Rio, we go from Sustainable City. Um, just please message us and we'll tell you all the times and the details. So we go out for a ride on the motorbike. So we take Rio, tears behind me. Um, so we go out and go for a breakfast or whatever. So fantastic. So another different way of an inclusion. And then nice. on Saturday mornings, 
I generally cycle, bottom of the stick, six o'clock, and do 60 kilometers with Rio, which I did yesterday, and I'm still sore. <laughs> <laughs> I would be too, 6 a.m., bottom of the stick at El uh, Nick, as always, thank you so much for your time. Thank I you really for having appreciate me, you as always. Um, guys, that is it for us on the Love and Device show. We're back with you every single weekday morning, same time, same place, stay safe, and wash your hands. Thank you.